So the last part of this particular unit on counting is combinations. Which we'll do today. There's a couple of sections in the book. Because the first section that is assigned homework is like four questions. Um, and then the, uh, the real questions follow that. Then tomorrow is applications of counting, Monday review, Tuesday test. Uh, let's say that I wanted all all three letter arrangements arrangements from a set of four letters. And let's for ease of use make those letters A, B, C, and D. Okay? So, how many are there? How many three-letter arrangements are there from a set of four letters? Or how would you calculate it? What would you, what would you write? What formula or math symbols or this stuff? Any? None? Should I pause this while we wait? It's going to take five minutes. Maybe come up. Yes. Like four P three. Like yeah. So four P three, right? Then I'll save you the problem. Bother working that out. Four P three is twenty four. Right there. Twenty four different arrangements. Right. Different means distinguishable. You know, we can tell them apart. And take a moment. Let's write those out. And I'll just kind of do it alphabetically. So we got ones that start with the letter A. So there's A, B, C, A, B, D, A, uh, that's all the A, B's. So there's A, C, B, A, C, D, A, D, B, A, D, C. Okay, we're back. And there's all 24 arrangements. Right? Now, what if we didn't care about the order? Right? So this has order built in. Right? We're saying this is that A, so if we were drawing uh, three out of four letters, then we might care about the order. Right? First prize, second prize, third prize, something like that. Right? So A, B, C. A wins first, B wins second, C wins third, A wins first, and so on. But what if we just cared about A, B, and C being drawn? Right? It's these three letters, are just, they're going to go to the movies or something. So then ABC is the same as ACB, right? Anything that has the letters A, B, and C in it will be considered the same, right? You're picking an A and a B and a C, right? And that just has Ds, so. So how many of those are there? Six, all right, wait for somebody to say it out loud, or three, right? is three factorial ways, because that's the ways of arranging those three objects, right? We know that there are three P3, or three factorial ways of arranging the three objects, okay? So if we don't care about what order they're drawn in, then how many, dis how many arrangements do we have if we don't care about the order? Let's do the, the A's, B's, and D's. A, B, and D. Uh, A, B, and D. That's bad. Okay, A, B, D. A, B, D. A, B, D. How many of those are there? Four. Oh, no, sorry, six. Well, six, which means that there are, so here, let's do the, the A, C, D's. A, C, D. Let's go with the fourth color. This is all the CBDs. All right, how many different colors do I have up there? Four, right? So there's only four ways of choosing the three letters from a group of four letters if we don't care about the order, right? 
their four way. So what we do is we take the 4P3, but 4P3 has order built in, right? It's a permutation, the order matters. And we divide it by 3 factorial, which takes out the order, right? Because, well, really, there's only one sixth of these 24 are, you know, three letters, right? A, B, C, A, B, D, A, C, D, and B, C, D, right? There's only four ways of choosing three letters from that group, okay? So that's equal to 24 over 6, which is 4. And that brings up the definition of a combination. So a combination is an arrangement of objects where the order doesn't matter. A combination is an arrangement of objects where order does not matter. Okay? So it's like you're getting dealt hands. Or you're playing cards with some friends, you get dealt five cards. Does it matter what order the cards came out? Because you're going to rearrange them anyways, right? You're going to arrange them however, you know, whatever game you're playing, different arrangements will suit you. So you'll reorder them. Okay? Which means your combination lock is actually misnamed. Because it does matter what order you do the numbers on your combination lock, right? But a combination is an arrangement where the order doesn't matter. So we should call them permutation locks, but we don't. They're still going to be called combination locks, but now you know better. Okay. Wait a sec, that's not really a combination, it's a permutation. Okay, the formula, the number of combinations, the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time. So we're still using n and r. Right? We did that with permutations. n is the number of objects you have. r is the number that you want to have in that group. So the number of combinations of n objects taken r at a time is n c r is n factorial over n minus r factorial. Now, if I stopped writing there, you'd say, hey, wait, that's the permutation formula, right? n factorial over n minus r factorial. So we take out the order, and that's, we just add in a little extra r factorial down there, right? And this guy here takes out the order, right? Because this, n factorial over n minus r factorial, is a permutation. That's the permutations. Permutations have order. We want to take out the order, we divide by r factorial. That takes out the order. Also denoted like this. n over r, so written as a set of brackets with the n written over the r. Okay? You'll see that on your formula sheet, you'll see that in the book see that in other books if you happen to, to study this occasionally. <coughs> so 4 over 3 written like this means 4C3, right? That's the same as 4C3, which is actually what you're going to see in your calculator, right? I mean, you've seen that. So you got NPR, right underneath that you had NCR, okay? You just didn't know what that was till now. And then you had factorial beneath that. So you can use your calculator, you can go 4C3, we can use the formula, so we'd say that's 4 factorial over 4 minus 3 factorial, 3 factorial, that's just a 1, which gives us 4. Right, it's going to, uh, it's going to simplify to 4. That's it. Okay, so four objects, right? So four, four C three. I use choose. Use the word choose for uh, for C. Use the word pick sometimes for for P. 
I'm picking, but so four C three, or sorry, four choose three or four choose three is set of all. Uh, I wanted to, I've got a set of four objects. I want to take them three at a time. How many ways can I do that? And I don't care about order. Okay, so order does not matter. Wow, so 649, right? We did 649 the other day. What's 49C6? So C means we don't care about the order of those six numbers that are chosen, right? You're playing 649, which some of you might be old enough to do legally. Play 649. How many possible combinations, right? Don't care about order, of six numbers from a set of 49. You gotta use your calculator, so somebody plug it in your calculator. Okay, it'll look like this in your calculator. 49C6 is, what do we got? Huh? All right, just give me the number. Just work it out in your calculator. Sorry, 98. 3-8. 3-8. 16. 13,983,860, right? So you buy one ticket, your chance of winning is one in 13,983,816, because that's how many combinations there are. Okay, now, you know, when we get to probabilities, we'll work this out and uh, take a look at it. And basically, your odds of winning are about the same whether or not you buy a ticket. Essentially, they're zero. Keep that. I know somebody does have to, well, somebody doesn't have to win, but eventually enough tickets are bought, so, you know, somebody does win. Um, you just have to cover off those almost 14 million possible combinations, right? And then somebody will win and uh, it will all be good, right? <coughs> okay, so let's do some examples of... Uh, Using where would we use combinations? So the big thing to keep in mind is that with a combination, the order does not matter, right? So what you have to ask yourself when you're reading these questions is, does the order matter? Then this is a permutation. Does the order not matter? Then this is a combination. You get to ask yourself that not today because most of today's questions will be combinations, so order won't matter. But you get to ask yourself that tomorrow when we're working through some problems. Monday when you're reviewing, Tuesday when you're writing the test, and ultimately, and most importantly, well, okay, then the field test on June 6th, and then the mock diploma on the 24th, but then for real on the 25th, right? You gotta ask yourself, does order matter or not? Right, and that's a big question that has to go through your mind. Okay, so let's say we have uh, a school, a school as a student council. With 15 members. There are nine females. And six males. We need to form a subcommittee, right? So we're going to form a subcommittee of five members. Nah, make it seven. So we want to form a subcommittee. Let's call it a fundraising subcommittee. Fundraising subcommittee of seven members. And what we want to do, and all of this stuff leads into probability, right? We're going to be doing this same exact stuff in probabilities. So, you know, we'll be doing set theory and probabilities, we'll be doing permutations, we'll be doing combinations in order to work out those probabilities. 
which according to people that wrote the test last semester, there was a lot of probability stuff, right? And probably because this stuff is embedded in it, right? So it's a way for them to test cross units, right? I mean, you can test uh, uh, set theory and counting as part of probability, really, right? Because you just say, well, in order to work out this probability, you're gonna have to figure this stuff out, these numbers, so, you know, it's cross-curricular in, in that sense. Well, not cross-curricular, it's cross-unit. Uh, we want to form a subcommittee. How many ways can we do this? Oh, many ways. Can we do this if? So A, there's no restriction. Because one of the big themes of this unit is restrictions, right? I mean, what do we, you know, is there a restriction? So if there are no restrictions, then how many ways could we do this? What are we going to write? In the big brackets. What goes up to? 15, right? Because there's 15 people on the committee. And how many of those 15 people do we need? Seven. We need seven. So it's 15 choose seven, which is equal to, so calculators out, need number, what do we get? 1435? 6435. Okay, so if there's no restrictions, there are 6,435 possible committees. What if? Mm, The committee is all female. How many ways are doing it if the committee is all female? How many females are there? Nine. How many of them do we need? How many males are there? Very funny, right? Six. How many of them do we need? Zero. Sometimes I like to write it this way because it takes everything into account, right? Like when you're making sense, so you say, okay, there's nine females, I need seven of them, there's six males, I need none. Nine plus six here is 15, and seven plus zero is seven. So I've, I've taken care of everything, right? Six choose zero is just one. Right? I mean, there's one. You don't choose any of them, right? That's the one way. That so really, the only thing we have to calculate is nine choose seven, which is thirty-six. Yeah, it's nine times eight. We got thirty-six, right? Okay, so thirty-six of those committees would be all female, right? Of the six thousand four hundred and thirty-five possible committees. Okay, what if there are or is uh, what if there are exactly three males? So how do we get exactly three males? So how many males are there? Six. How many do we need? Three. How many females are there? Nine. How many of them do we need? Four. Because there are 15 in total, and we need seven, right? There's 15 people on the committee. Six of them are female. Oh, sorry, wait a sec. What did we do? Oh, three. Yeah. So six of them are males. We want to choose three of them. That can be done in six choose three ways. We then multiply, right? Very rarely do we add these numbers together. The only time you add is like set theory when you're doing a union and then you're adding together everything in the circles, okay? In counting methods, you're pretty much always multiplying, right? Okay, what's six choose three times nine choose four? Or we can work them out individually. I mean, six choose three is 20, right? And nine choose four is
126, right? Okay, so 0 to 2,520? I don't know. I don't calculate it all. I don't have to want to. I don't want to even say one. There we go. That's You can even pull it into line. Uh, okay, so exactly three males. We've got that. How about uh, D? Committee must include the student council president Susan. Okay, so what if the committee's got to include Susan, who's the student council president? How many ways can we do this? Yeah. So what we can do is we can write this down, right? I'll, I'll use C notation. We can go one choose one. There is one Susan who must be chosen, and that can be done in one way. And then we'll go, there are 14 other people from whom we choose six. Okay, and you're going to multiply. In this case, you're looking at these first numbers adding up, right? That's 15. I didn't need the one choose one, right? I mean, taking Susan is like, you know, the word puppy is having to start with a P. You just throw away a P, right? And you're left with the other letters and you deal with them. Uh, same deal. If Susan's got to be on it, okay, Susan, you're, you know, there are now 14 non Susans of whom we need six, right? But I sometimes like writing it out like this. Then how many ways is that, 14 choose six? 3,003. So if a particular person needs to be on, we can see that that's, you know, leave, that cuts in half, cuts about in half the number of possible committees you can have if you must have a particular person. And what if, let's do one more what if. What if uh, E, there must be There must be at least one male, okay? There's got to be at least one guy on the subcommittee. So, now we hit English, right? If there's at least one guy, then how many guys could there be on the subcommittee? There could be one, four, two, four, 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 right? Why not seven? Because there's not seven guys, right? Okay, so if there's at least one male, it means there's one or two or three or four or five or six. Now, now you get to add. So the word or in mathematics, right, we did this with set theory. The word or means you're adding, the word and means you're multiplying, right? So I would have to do one guy. So how many guys were there? It'd be six, choose one, and then there would be nine females, and I would choose six. Or... Don't start punching this into your calculator, okay? Or we choose two guys, and then we have five uh, women, or we choose three, and then we have four, or we choose four, and we have three, or we choose five, and we have two, or we choose six, and we have one. Do you want to work all that out? Say no. No, I want to work all that out. No. There must be an easier way. So what's not in there? Of all the possibilities of six choose one, six choose two, what's, what's not in there? Yeah, six choose zero, right? So what we don't have is we don't have the committees where there are no males. So what we can do is this. We can say, well, all possible committees, what was the number of all possible committees? So without regard to anything, <coughs> was 15 choose 7, right? If from that we subtract the ones that have no males, 
then we'll be left with the ones that have at least one male, right? One or two or three or four or five or six. We'll go back to 14b, right, from however many days ago. And I think, do we already have those numbers? So we've got 64, 35, and the committee was all female, so 36. So it'll be 64, 35 minus 36, which will be 6,399, right? Now, if you take these and calculate them all and add them up, they're going to add up to 6,399, right? But sometimes the way we get to the answer isn't by just doing directly what's there. Right. Sometimes we get to the answer by thinking a little bit and saying, wait a sec, that's way too many things. right? So if I said, uh, let's do one. What if there had to be at least, at least two males? Then we could go back up to where we are here, right? We go back up here with at least two males and say it's this. But that's still too many to work out, right? Six choose two, choose three, choose four, choose five, choose six. So instead, what are we going to do? do it this way. Let's put brackets around that and we'll add these together. So from the total number of committees, we will subtract no males or, which is a plus, right, or one male. Okay, so that's a little more easily doable, right, because then we're only doing a few calculations, not having to do, you know, a string of calculations. And, and we got a number for that? Sounds reasonable. I mean, it's smaller than uh, six three. So if nobody objects to that, then we're just going to go with six thousand three hundred. If it's wrong, well, that's your own fault, right? Don't blame me. Oh, five thousand eight hundred and oh, wait, 95. ninety-five. Ninety-five. Oh, well, now we have competing. So do we have a vote? Six three zero nine. Oh, almost there. Five eight nine five. I see three five eight nine five. Yeah, that's five thousand. What'd you get? I got five thousand. Okay. All right, we got four of them. So sorry, I think the majority. Went, not, not that <laughs> math is not a democracy. You don't vote on answers, but it's likely if uh, if a number of people got that. It seemed reasonable. It was smaller than that. Okay. Wasn't quite. Uh, wasn't quite there. Uh, <laughs> card games. Right. Here, real useful math, right? Card games. Deck of 52 cards. Standard deck, right? That means standard deck. No jokers, 52 cards, right? 13 ranks, four suits, blah, blah, blah. Standard deck of 52 cards. We're going to make a five card hand, right? So you're playing a game that requires you to deal out five cards, right? So five card hand. And so the first thing we want to know is how many of those five card hands are all black cards?
So, how do we get up all black cards? Remember, you say X choose Y, I'll write it out in the appropriate notation, we'll work it out. How many black cards are there? Half of them. Half of 52? There are 26 black cards. How many do we need? How many red cards are there? And we need none of them. You don't need to write this one in, right? You might like to because it, it handles all 52 cards and shows that we're getting five. But, you know, um, anything choose zero is just one, right? The way that I choose none of you from a group of 28 is one way, right? Just I walked out of the room, I'm not choosing anybody. So, what's 26 choose 5? 6, 5, 7, 8, 0. Okay. Uh, all diamonds. How many diamonds? How many do we want? Five. If I wanted to, I could fill this in. There are 39 non-diamonds, of which I want zero. Yeah. You can put it in or not. It won't make any difference. So what's 13 choose five? 1287. What's it called when you have all diamonds? Let's assume we're playing poker. Oh, it's called a flush. It's called a flush. However, that's not how many diamond flushes there are. Because 12 of those are straight flushes, and they're not counted as flushes. They're counted as straight flushes. So when you go, and, and we, we'll look back. We'll do some probability. We'll, we'll do some poker hands of probability. right? And it all comes down to counting, right? or set theory. Set theory, counting, <coughs> probability, they're all tied together. <coughs> Um, how about three kings and two queens? Three kings and two queens. How many kings are there? Four. How many of those do I want? How many queens are there? Four. How many of them do I want? I'm not going to fill in the rest, right? But the other one would be there are 48 non, or sorry, 44 not kings or queens, and I need none of those. All right, so four choose three is four, and four choose two is, I think, six. Let's save some time. I could do the smaller ones if I could. Two pairs. want two pairs. This requires a little bit in front, right? How many different ranks are there? Ace, two, three, four, five, six, seven, one, two, three. Thirteen. Thirteen. There's thirteen ranks, right? And I need to choose two of them, right? So this is the way I choose what I'm going to get pairs up, right? 13 choose two. So like a pair of twos and threes, right? Twos and fours, twos and fives, twos and, you know, whatever. So this is choosing which cards, right? which ranks, choosing the ranks. Choose ranks. Once I've done that, within a given rank, there are how many cards? Four. And I need how many of them? And then within the second rank, there are how many cards? So let's say this was kings, and then I'm doing queens. How many cards have I chosen? Got two of these and two of these. Two plus two. How many cards do I need? I need five, so I need one more card. How many cards are left that I can choose from? Okay, 
so here, so imagine this. I've taken all the ranks, right? I got my four aces, four twos, four threes, and so on, right? All the way to king. So I've got ace through king stacked up in fours. Okay. So the 13 choose two is just that's the ways that I pick the two, right? So let's say that I've chosen fours and tens. Okay, so I've got fours and tens. So from the fours I need two. And from the tens, I need two, right? So the fours and the ten, now they're gone, right? Because I, I can no longer choose a four or a ten. I'm not allowed to, because that would give me three of a kind and two of a kind, which isn't two pairs. So fours and tens are gone. I'm left with 11 other ranks of four cards each. So how many cards are left for me to get my last card from? Four cards of each of 11 ranks. 44, choose one. Okay. Why do you have to do that step? Which step? The last, well, like, why do you have to add on the last one? I need five cards, I've only got four. Five card hand. Oh, uh, okay. Two cards, four cards, I need the fifth card. Okay. Just don't worry, they're not gonna ask you stuff like this, right? I might, they won't. Um, but, you know, if we're going to do any decent job of examining poker hands when we get into probability, yeah, we'll come back and we can visit this, right? What's the probability of getting two pairs? Okay. And we'll examine it. Okay, what else might we want to do? So we've done exactly so many and at least so many. And so, oh, one last kind of thing, and I saw this question on there. Um, how many triangles can I draw using the vertices of an octagon octagon So I have an octagon, I want to use the vertices, I want to draw triangles, how many triangles can I draw? So let's take a look at an octagon. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Octagon's got eight sides, right? Stop sign. You see those a lot. Um, so how many vertices are there? There's eight. How many of them do I need to draw a triangle? So here's one triangle that can be drawn. Right? So eight, choose three. Right? I have eight vertices, I need to choose three. I don't care about order, right? Because if I cared about order, then I would count this line here going from A to B, let's say that was or A, B, C. I'd count the line going from A to C as one, and I'd count the line going from C to A as one. I don't want to do that, right? It's just one line, it's part of one triangle. So we don't care about order, right? It's just eight, choose three, which is 56. So if you sat down and drew all the possible triangles <coughs> that you could in an octagon, you get 56 of them. Okay, so it's possible you could see something like that. And that'll do it. Oh, no, wait, sorry, one more. Um, at a minor hockey tryout, players meet on the ice at the end. To shake hands. If there were 300 handshakes, then how many players tried out? Okay. So if there were 300 handshakes, So 
So, how do we do this? So, how many people does it take to shake hands? Two. Two people, right? So, if I shake hands with Kurt, and Kurt shakes hands with me, we only want to count that once, right? We want to count that twice. If it was a permutation, then Kurt shaking hands with me would be one, me shaking hands with him would be two, but when I was right, it's just you shook hands. We don't know how many players there are, but if we pair them up, then they're going to be 300 different pairings, right? Without regard to, you know, A shakes hands with B, B shakes hands with A, one combination. So we need N choose 2 to equal 300. We could do this using factorial, right? We've got a formula for N choose 2, right? It's N factorial over n minus 2 factorial, 2 factorial, and that has to equal 300. What's the first thing you would do if you were going to solve this? Very first thing. I would multiply both sides by 2, right? Just get rid of that 2, right? 2 factorial is 2, right? So let's do this. n factorial over n minus 2 factorial equals 600, right? Just get rid of the 2. Oh, now we're looking at something and say, wait a sec. I know how to do those, right? It just goes back to day 1 or whatever day we learned factorial notation, right? What do I do? I go n times n minus 1 times n minus 2. I just start expanding the larger number, right? And when do I stop? Now, I stop when I have the same expression top and bottom. Right, and that's equal to 600. Let me go up here and squeeze in. So we get n squared minus n is 600. Now, this has to factor because n is a number of people, and numbers of people are whole numbers, right? There are no half people, there are no you know, fractions, it's not a real number, it's an integer. And I'll give you the number. Okay, the numbers are 25 and 24. Because 25 times 24 is 600. So that means that n is 25, or n is negative 24. So at this point, what do you do? Cross off the negative 24, right? There weren't negative 24 of kids playing, you know, trying out. So I say there were 25 players trying out. So that's saw here. Here's the easy way to solve it, right? Now, if I say determine, this is how you have to do it, right? Because you got to show work. If I don't say determine, then this is what you do. You go into your calculator, you go y1 is equal to x n c r uh, 2. Okay? So you do this, you, you're not going to graph it, but you're going to use your graph calculator. You go y1 is equal to x, because I'm trying to solve for the unknown, right? x. So x c2 equals 300. Then I go into the table, so I'll go second function graph, and then I just keep hitting down arrow until I see y equal to 300. When I do, I look across, see the x, that's it. Okay, so you'll have to go down to 25, right? Then you'll see it, then you'll be done. Okay, but determine what you're going to hit on the, because the for real test is going to have you showing some stuff, right? The quiz didn't have that, but the for real test will.